one of the reasons I uh, personally invited a lot of the hospitals to come and uh, members of hospital boards because I think it's very important uh, that we as uh, taxpayers and as concerned citizens understand that the health budget is overtaking everything else uh, that we have. At one time, the health budget was about a third of our provincial budget. Now it's uh, racing ahead in gigantic strides, uh, strides. And our job, I think, as citizens and board members and hospital members and contributors to hospitals is to ensure that we reduce the cost. And one of the ways to reduce the cost is uh, e-health. And one of the ways of reducing e-health, as we know in this province, which we've had some disastrous experiences, is to call on the best practices of anybody in the world. And when I saw DB Motion, I thought this was exactly the place and exactly the time that we should bring DB Motion here. And I hope that the hospitals and members of the boards that I've invited here will talk to DB uh, and let them come and show their stuff. Because to my mind, this is the future of productivity in the healthcare system. DB Health. Our second uh, speaker is equally uh, interesting and has an equally interesting product. His name is Ram Liebenthal. Again, you can see his uh, VC uh, or his uh, curriculum vitae in the, the materials. And Ram is an experienced global medical devices guy. He's been involved in capital equipment and marketing, and most recently he joined Early Sense, which I saw uh, in uh, Tel Aviv at, uh, because of the organization of Yisim. Uh, and this is an innovative Israeli medical device for a startup company, and Ram is the VP of marketing. And I won't go into his background, but he served as a, um, he's been in marketing, and he served in many leadership capacities in um, the health area, at GE Health, he was uh, involved in GE Health, and we have here a former president of GE in Israel. He'll be speaking to us a little later on today. And he earned, uh, Ram uh, earned a degree, uh, MS, uh, M, MSc in biomedical engineering from Tel Aviv and BS in engineering from Technion, two great institutions. And without further ado, Ram, uh, Ram Liebenthal. Ram. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Uh, just to make things very clear here, just from the beginning, uh, I will tie into some of the conversations that we had here this, here this morning. But first and foremost, Maury Bromfeld here was my uh, manager in the past in G Healthcare, and my only purpose here is to make him proud. <laughs> so I will contact. Actually, I, I will connect to what Jane said earlier, and um, it's uh, it's about uh, that we are going right, and I will say that we are going, but not that fast and we would like to go on our own terms, all right? So this is the topic of this conversation today. But before I start, I would like to say a few things about Early Sense. Early Sense was uh, started, was founded uh, about six years ago. And uh, what I'm about to tell you today is pretty much an unfinished story, an unfinished business. And it is unfinished because we are still um, um, before the commercial, the hopeful commercial success that we're going to see, all right? And uh, it's a story of uh, innovation, it's a story of uh, perseverance and opportunities. So the company started first six years ago with the idea of developing a monitor that will predict asthma in advance, which means 48 to 72 hours before um, the, let's say, the asthma attack, all right? And um, so they spent a lot of time on it and they developed a wonderful tool that is actually working. And it's working beautifully. But later on, they discovered, the company discovered that um, there is no market for it. There is no market for it yet. It means that they came too early to the US market. The reimbursement was not the, the, the let's say, the health authorities and the payers were not ready to cover the expense of the monitor, this very important monitor for home use. So they, they got to a kind of a, a point in the road um, that they needed to decide what to do. And the perseverance goes to the leadership of the company as well as to the venture capital uh, leaders who invested in the company. It was either to call it a day or believe in what the company did. And the point is that through the development, the company developed an amazing expertise in signal processing. The ability to take signals from the body, measure signals from the body and translate them into vital signs, heart rate, respiratory rate, patient motion, all right? And we'll show all, all that to you. And they needed to decide what to do, and they looked at the market, and they looked at the opportunities, and they realized that there is a huge door in front of them, and the door is open. 
and I will share it with you, all right? So in, in the US today, there is an amazing and increased focus on patient safety and risk management for patients in the hospital. And there are what is called adverse events or preventable events that occur to the patients while they are in the hospital. And these are called also hospital acquired conditions, for example. And here's a list of, of some of the, of the, of the safety uh, measures or what hap could happen to patients in hospitals today in the US and actually everywhere in the world. It comes to pressure ulcer, which is the skin wounds when the, for elderly patients who are not that mobile in bed or when it comes to patient falls, there, are, there is a population of patients that are supposed to be in bed and not be outside of bed without supervision. And sometimes they just take off and go places in, in uh, either go to the washroom or go to, uh, the, um, to other places or sit and then they fall and then the risk for the patient is when they fall. And that and there are situations where there is death in low, mortal, low mortality procedures after giving birth, for example, the, there was an amazing story last week in Israel, and so on. So these um, events, preventable events, are quite significant um, in, in, in the world, all right? So if we look at the number of cases in the, between over three years, almost a million cases in the US alone. And these are mostly Medicare patients, which are uh, mostly retired uh, people who are above 65 and uh, they need support, and it's not the entire number, but it's million cases of that something happened to the patient in the hospital. And it translates to about $7 billion in excess cost due to safety events. It's pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. And so we are, I'm here today to share with you what the company decided to do with this technology, and the result is this seemingly innocent monitor and the sensor. So we see here a display. It's a monitor that measures heart rate and patient motion while the patient is in bed, all right? And this little flat thing is actually the sensor that measures the signal. So there is no attachment. There's absolutely no attachment, no contact with, direct contact with the patient. So what the company is doing, it's enabling the proactive reduction of these adverse events and trying to help the economy and try to reduce the, the money spent on these events. So how does it work in general? When the patient is in bed, it's usually in the general, uh, on the general floor, general unit, patients are in bed, and they are usually today, in, let's say medical surgery, usually today they are not monitored or continuously. So what will happen is that the nurse will, uh, will uh, go to the patient probably every three or four hours to take his or her vital signs, heart rate, respiratory rate, and check on the patient. And it connects to what Peter actually uh, presented earlier. Peter was talking about the availability of information of any given patient at any given point in time at any location, right? Here we're talking about let's measure con the patient continuously. Let's see how we don't measure the patient or check on the patient every four hours. Let's, let's monitor the patient continuously, have the data available for everyone. So the referring physician who is outside the hospital can actually log into whatever website that we are preparing and will be able to check on the patient at any given point in time. So here's a frame of a hospital, a regular hospital bed. The sensor is placed on the bed and then underneath the mattress. Above the mattress, we have the patient and the patient has his own or her own motion. He is kind of a big guy. So the, sen the, the sensor who is, that is under the mattress will sense the cardiac, the, the, the motion of the heart, and it will sense the motion of the lungs. Everything mechanical that is translated through the mattress will be registered by this monitor and into the screen, into the, into the display. And uh, so even the, this uh, uh, finger tapping, which is just an indication of how it works, is, uh, is measured and accurately uh, presented on, on the display. So what are we doing with the, this technology? Where is it presented? So it is presented in several cases because data has to be available in different areas. So first, it's on the bedside monitor, as we saw. Secondly, if you look on the left, and I will show an, uh, uh, a high resolution picture, is the, the nurse's station. The nurse's station, so all the, all the patients, 34, 35 patients, 
that are in the unit, all the information is displayed on a single monitor and all the alerts are being displayed with, when the alarm takes off, if there is a need, if the heart rate is too high or if the respiratory rate is too low, everything is presented in a single place. It's a wonderful, what we believe a wonderful management tool and powering tool for the nurses to provide to, to the patients. In addition, it's being displayed on the nurse's phone, so there is an SMS that goes in, in, uh, to anyone's, uh, any, any nurse phone. There is, um, and then the central display, which is the, uh, at the nurse's station. This is just a, a, a larger picture of the, the large screen. It's a 65-inch LCD, which is placed in different areas in, in the department. At, at a glance, you can see the different alerts and how all the patients are doing. There are different alerts there, alerts for uh, bed exit, and alerts for uh, patient turns, and alerts for uh, respiratory and heart uh, performance. So, results. We have uh, two clinical sites in Los Angeles. One of them is uh, up and running for almost a year now. And in this site, the number of uh, monitors that we have are 33. So 33 of the beds in one department are equipped with the monitor. All the information is channeled to the central screen. More than 3,500 patients were monitored with this, with this technology. It also documents the number of patient turns, documented patient turns. So if, if a patient has a risk of uh, uh, skin wounds, for example, this patient is put on a certain treatment protocol and follow-up protocol that makes sure that this patient is being turned, physically turned in bed every two hours, every three hours, depending on the protocol. And the system can measure it. How does it measure it? Well, it's, it's pretty much, it's quite revolutionary, right? Because usually when we look at the vital signs monitor, it will show a number. Heart rate and respiratory rate, it's a number. This system logs the information continuously as long as the patient is in bed. So you can able, you're able to see the, the trends in the patient's heart rate, respiratory rate, and it also logs the actual movement of patient in bed. So if the patient needs to be turned every two hours, it will measure it, as you can see on, on the lower bar of the, of the monitor. It's a change in mindset in the way healthcare is being provided on the, uh, on the floor. So results, quite amazing. The, the reduction in the number of cases in pressure ulcer or pressure wounds is around 75%. So we have the data of the department of the hospital in the previous 12 months, and we compared it to the 12 months of operation with our system, and the results are pretty amazing. So a reduction of 75% in pressure wounds, patient force reduction of, of 62%, ICU transfers, which is the, the escalation of the patient to a higher level of care in case there is a deterioration in, in the patient condition because of whatever stress, respiratory or heart rate or infection. And overall length of stay, which is a, a very important parameter that is measured by, by every hospital CEO and CFO, is how long the patient stays in the hospital. And that we see, obviously, there are many parameters that contribute to that, but we see a significant reduction, about half a day in the length of stay of patients in the hospital. Just to show a picture, the name of the product, the company is Early Science, the name of the product is Everon. And uh, just to tell a little bit about the company, um, founded in 2004, it's based in Ramat Gan, Israel, 28 employees. That's the number of employees we have today. I can tell you that next week we're already going up to 31 because we just started our first um, uh, commercial team in LA, it's going to be a sales director and a clinical specialist and obviously a field engineer and we're going to grow in the country. And FDA cleared several months and for several months now and uh, we hope to receive the Canada Health um, regulation uh, in May and then we'll grow commercially hopefully here in Canada as well and bring this wonderful technology to Canada. Thank you. <laughs>